talk about it, uh, Shen. Absolutely, Pankaj. And uh, yes, the markets are looking pretty healthy and buoyant in today's trading session. Remember, on Tuesday also we had an amazing close, and hopefully today we are able to sustain this sort of enough move coming in on the markets. But let's uh, move on. And we know a lot of companies have actually come out with their quarterly updates. Uh, and also today under BNS and Lens, that's buy now, sell now, Lens, we will bring on in focus all the non-final, all the NBFCs in particular. These companies have reported uh, strong uh, Q2 uh, updates, operational updates, that is. My colleague uh, Upasna is here to tell us uh, what are the key findings. Upasna, what do you Well, when it comes to NBFC space, we are surely seeing a strong set of numbers coming in. First of all, uh, talking about Bajaj Finance, we saw an AOM growth of almost 31% on Y on Y basis, best in 11 quarters. Well, talking about the company's new loans booked during Q2 FI23, it stood at 6.8 million versus 6.3 million in Q2 FI22. And the company's deposit growth saw an uptick of almost 37% on Y on Y basis. Well, company man, uh, manages to maintain a strong liquidity position and it is well capitalized with a capital adequacy ratio of almost 25%. Well, moving forward towards HDFC Limited, the loans assigned to HDFC Bank saw an uptick of almost 28% on Y on Y basis. And in terms of individual loans sold in the preceding 12 months, it saw an uptick of almost 27% on Y on Y basis. Well, talking about M&M Finance, the disbursement grew almost 110% on Y and Y basis, and the company estimates to clock a disbursement of almost 21,300 crores in H1 FI23. Well, talking about the col collection efficiency, that too saw an improvement, and it stood at 98% as compared to 96% on month-on-month -month basis. Well, talking about the asset quality, that was one of the key highlights of the update. And asset quality of the company has improved on month-on-month -on -month basis and even on quarterly basis. So here are all the main key updates from NBFC Space, surely seeing a good set of numbers. Right. Uh, Ashish Kapoor is also with us and Kunal Botra. Kunal, let me come to you uh, first. What do you make of uh, NBFC price movement? Uh, Tuesday and Monday was good for a lot of NBFCs. What do you make of it? Good morning, Pankaj. So, uh, I think on the NBFC front, uh, only one stock which I believe looks very attractive to me on the charts and something which has been standing quite tall from the uh, June lows for itself is Bajaj Finance. That stock has done exceptionally well for itself from a point of being at almost 5,000, 5,500. Bajaj Finance has done exceptionally well. Now perched comfortably above the 7,000 mark for itself. Even in the last two, three months of this market volatility, Bajaj Finance has managed to uh, you know, sustain above the 7,000 mark on a consistent basis on, closing, on monthly closing. So I believe that that stock is something which I would continue to be bullish upon. And uh, my sense is that if this move trickles down into the uh, entire NBFC pack, then I think Bajaj Finance can even possibly hit back much above its life high levels as well. All right, uh, that was the view coming in on NBFCs, particularly Bajaj Finance from Kunal. A very good morning to you, Kunal, and good morning to you as well, Ashish. And what do you make of this performance coming in from the NBFCs in the, uh, in the quarter gone by? And uh, do you think that the future does look bright for them, given that they have reported a strong uh, Q2 operational performance? I think uh, the future definitely looks bright because, you know, I mean, we are at the cusp of a, uh, something which is uh, going to be a great consumer boom and also great consumer spending. So I think uh, uh, the NBFCs are going to do very well uh, as a general uh, statement, you can say that. Uh, the the uh, key drivers will always be, I think, the fact that housing is still a very... Uh, nascent industry here comparatively and so housing uh, demand is going to be very good for next many many years and so uh, the fact that a lot of the leading uh, NBFCs are in housing or are getting into housing finance uh, in particular I have in mind is Bajaj uh, finance which is getting into housing uh, finance in a big way so housing would be a very key uh, you know growth engine going forward the other will be auto so I think these two will continue to uh, flourish and uh, consumer demand as it is, is going to also grow. So I think the, the NBFC sector will continue growing uh, compared to when we compare to the rest of the world, despite whatever we have seen in the last few years, we are still at a very nascent stage 
uh, in terms of the overall uh, you know funding uh, per household if you look at any other criteria funding per household or the total uh, housing finance as a you know, com compared to the population or compared to the housing market as a whole uh, so on all these parameters we are still uh, uh, at a very very uh, low base so the base is going to keep expanding and growing very well now what we have to keep in mind of course the, uh, is uh, is that while the sector may grow uh, not all NBFC companies are going to be able to take advantage of this because I think going forward, technology will play a very key role. Technology spend will have to really grow for the NBFC companies to do well. So therefore, the, the big companies will have a very big advantage. The whole sector growth will be skewed towards the bigger players. Uh, hence, even if the smaller players look very attractive on, an, on a valuation basis, one should avoid them unless one can really study in depth and get uh, the whatever if they have any niche advantage or if they have any competitive advantage otherwise it will be in my opinion best to stay with the top two which is which is bajaj finance and chola mandalam uh, these two will get the maximum advantage of the growth in this sector because they both have a very good base have very good operating ratio right right ashish got the point team. ashish got the point got the point uh, on that note we are taking a break coming back quickly uh, stay tuned, Nifty at 17,004. Hello and welcome, you're watching. Because it, E.T. is one of my favorites in the world. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. This is a very insightful question that you asked, Nikunj, and almost seems like you were listening in on the deliberation the committee was doing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. And if this cup of coffee is costing you 25 rupees right now, after five years, it may cost you 100 rupees. Predicting the market or predicting the short-term move in the market, well, that's always very easy. Predicting it right and making money, it's not impossible. It could be a challenge. See, Nikunj, you're a very seasoned uh, uh, market observer and therefore you may hit the nail on the head. I think you have always uh, kept the focus on the retail investor and I think it's again a very apt, very good question. Nikunj, first of all, thank you so much. You are one person I've always enjoyed interacting uh, throughout the last 15-20 years. You know, the problem on coming on your channel is that you already know everything. I just heard your introduction. Uh, what can anybody add to that? numbers game and it sometimes does come across as one-dimensional but what people don't see is that these numbers when strung together tell a story there's no really black or white it very much seems to be a work in progress of triumphs and mistakes greed and fear and I bring you that story behind the numbers in action The personal finance show that helps you achieve all your financial dreams. This show gets you everything that you need to know about your money, how to earn more, invest smartly and spend while getting the best bang for your buck. From the perfect home to early retirement and everything in between. Real estate, everyone knows, is an asset that Indians absolutely love. Maybe even more than gold. Join us every weekday at 5pm on the ET Money Show. Investment made easy, only on ET Now. With each passing day, this market is becoming better. And with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you have participated on every decline, you've actually made money. ITC's credo is nation first, sub I would like to live this philosophy in whatever business 
we do. We continue to be very well diversified across product lines. The general health of the company continues to be very strong. We are a publicly listed company. We have access to capital. We have great brands. No, beautiful question. Yeah, I can tell you, we believe that we'll be able to reduce costs. It, ET is one of my favorites in the world. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. This is a very insightful question that you're asking, Nikunj, and almost seems like you were listening in on the deliberation the committee was doing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. But if this cup of coffee is costing you 25 rupees right now, after five years, it may cost you 100 rupees. Predicting the market or predicting the short-term move in the market, well, that's always very easy. Predicting it right and making money, it's not impossible. It could be a challenge. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. And it is the segment that we get you all your queries. But before that, uh, let me uh, uh, go across to Kunal. And Kunal, volatile market situation, volatile market conditions. Uh, no doubt we are up uh, for a second day in a row. But what should retail investors keep in mind while investing in the markets currently? See, I think there are a lot of aspects to look out for. One is, uh, you know, having the right sort of portfolio mix. See, in every, uh, you know, bull market phase or an uptrend phase, there is always this tendency and, uh, you know, extreme confidence, which, which tends to get into more of a euphoric mode very easily for retail investors. So, and, and that leads to buying stocks which are, uh, you know, very high beta, buying stocks which may not, uh, you, know, uh, you know, show some great fundamentals as such. So, I think that's one uh, you know, aspect which I think retail investors have to control. You know, sticking to quality over time, uh, I think, has proven to be a very good strategy. And then look out for more of long-term investment. So, it's very, very important to try and have these two very important bif bifurcations. Is one, always stick to quality and look out for stocks which have formidable business models, strong fundamentals, and of course, very good chart uh, you know, presents for themselves. And the second is look out for uh, you know, more of long-term trading rather than extremely, extremely short-term trading, especially for those quality stocks. So, Kunal, if somebody doesn't know chart, then uh, what to look forward to? Out of that entire four things, one was that charts have to be good. But if somebody doesn't know, then? Watch BNSN. Watch BNSN. <laughs> okay. Very uh, good advice, right <laughs> advice. I hope all of you all have jotted that down. Uh, uh, the, right, Kunal, I just wanted to get your perspective on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the advice that you were giving. So, you know, markets have become very fast. We've seen S&P going up 4% in two days. It fell down 5% in three days. Uh, you know, some of the stocks are reacting. I mean, they price in all the information within like a couple of hours or three hours, you know, whether it's plus, minus, extreme, non-extreme. Uh, how should one look at it? Because after that, uh, the return percentage may be subdued or, you know, the best may be priced in. So how should one look at this change in the last three, four months? So yes, the change and the... So I think the markets have become very, very dynamic. Information flow has become, uh, you know, very, very uh, strong and very quick into the markets. And that's why you've seen a very sharp reaction. The volatility has increased. The average volatility has been has changed significantly for the markets as you compare with the decade, the previous decade, 2010, 2020. So I think that's one of the reasons why I believe that the markets have become a bit more volatile. But then the other way to look at it is that the markets are pricing in the information very, very quickly, which means whatever you're looking at in terms of the prices in front of you and on the screen is the actual information and the actual price, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, uh, which is factored in all the, uh, you know, cumulative information which is available to itself. And that's why I believe that it's a very mature sign of a market. Right, and with that, let's kick start with the query segment then. Uh, for all of the viewers who are tuned in, you know what to do. Do write your name, the stock that you want to ask your query on. Do mention the time horizon that you're looking to hold the uh, stock for if you already purchase. Then do mention your buy price as well as the quantity and also your horizon as well. You can write into us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, 
Also, you can write into us on the WhatsApp number that is flashing on the top of your screen. So let's get going with the queries. Then the first one coming in from Nino, and Nino wants uh, to know about Ganesha Ecosphere for the long term. He's already holding 100 shares, uh, Ashish, at a price of around 600 rupees per share, and uh, he wants to know what's this, uh, what's the scenario? How does Ganesha Ecosphere look considering their capex plans as well? Yeah, hi. Uh, see, this particular stock I haven't tracked, so I don't want to call kind of comment on it. Have any view on this one? Well, I don't track the stock, but then uh, I think, uh, you know, the charts and the liquidity parameters are a bit uh, inconsistent for Ganesh Ecosphere. So I think trading at 650, 60 plus levels currently, I would suggest a, a complete avoid. Right. Uh, you know, we have some more queries coming in as well. So, you know, Kunal, let me put this one to you and this is coming in from the defensive pack or defense pack rather not defensive pack sorry for that uh, so sir or ma'am for buy now sell now team so Kunal I directed to you the defense stocks have been performing well uh, over the last few weeks the trend seems to be positive I want to buy Mazda or Doc at the current level is it possible this query is coming in from Mr. Arpan in Calc BR Arpan in Cal from Kolkata. See, I understand that Mazgao Doc has done exceptionally well in the last uh, you know two weeks, as well as over the last uh, you know three four months. I think from the March April lows for Mazgao Doc. So I think it's done exceptionally well in both of those time frames. Now the reason why I believe that you should probably stay a bit cautious over here is that uh, you know the stock has gone through a very strong uptrend. For example, the RSI on Mazgao Doc on the daily chart is almost at 80 plus levels. On the weekly charts, it's a staggering. 88 plus RSI on the on the on the stock price. These are very very overbought conditions for the stock price. Initiating a fresh buy would lead to a risk reward which is much less than one is to one. So on either of the aspects, whether it's trading, whether it's investing, buying at current levels may not be a fruitful decision for Mascow Doc. You'll have to wait out for a point where the stock gets into a correction, and that correction could be uh, you know, as much as maybe 15 to 20 percent as well. That could be a point where you can look to start entering. Right, this one is coming from Raja Gopalan and he wants a long-term outlook on the power sector, Ashish. He wants to know about some good stocks that he can look to invest for a period of about two to three years. What's your take on the power sector and which of these counters do you think now looks attractive given, no doubt, we've seen the power sector also see a massive rally of late? Yeah, the power sector has seen a rally and I think the outlook looks very positive given that the fact that, you know, uh, the economy is likely to do very well and uh, infrastructure spending and other parameters also look very encouraging. I think uh, the best stocks are still, I think, uh, uh, one the one way of playing the power sector could be REC, which, which offers also a good dividend yield and a good valuation uh, point to enter. Uh, the other the way of playing the power sector could be, you know, Tata Power, which is uh, currently is not a very good value entry point, but it's pretty promising in terms of the growth, uh, you know, parameters. Uh, and along with that, the other way of playing into the power sector could be, you know, you know, ultimately the growth is going to come because a lot of new areas are going to get into the power space. So one other way, indirect way of doing the power sector could be to look at Havels, and uh, Bajaj Electricals because as more and more areas get uh, covered with power, get consistent and good power quality, uh, the demand for consumer electric electric electricals will go up. So Bajaj Electrical and uh, Hevels are the two ideas which, in, in my opinion, uh, kind of uh, are be, be much better to play the power scheme than some of the power generating companies. Right, uh, Ashish, uh, we hope that answers the query uh, for our viewers. Uh, this one is coming in from Dubai. Uh, it's coming in from Vishal. He says, is it a good time to add Excite Industries at the current market price? From a long-term perspective, he owns 15 shares of Excite at 177 rupees uh, per share. Kunal, could you take this one? Excite Industries, 177. Well, I'll suggest an avoid on Excite Industries. You know, looking at the charts, three months, six months, one year, three years, on majority of the time frame, it's it's been an absolutely uh, you know flat kind of a stock for itself. It's not done exceptionally well. In fact, uh, you know the major high for Excite Industries just about in the 2020-21 rally was around the 200 to 20 mark, and then the correction which happened took the stock back towards that 130 levels. The stock is now just marginally above that 130 mark when you try and compare this with the 225 highs for Excite Industries. So, which means that it's been a stock which has underperformed in majority of the time scales. I would suggest an avoid.
Okay, this one's come from Ajay Kunal and this one is for you. He's saying that he has some mid-caps which are down about 30%. Now he wants to know whether he should book losses in them and move money to the large caps as they are also available at a good valuation or should he just wait? And I believe this question, apart from Ajay, a lot of our investors would be having in mind, isn't it? Well, yes, uh, it's possible. And I think uh, I would probably sense that the buying which you've done for mid-caps would probably be in the fag end of 2021 when there was a good amount of euphoria into many of these names. Now, I'm not sure of the kind of quality of stocks which you have, but as an average down 30% uh, you know, for these mid-cap names, which means, of course, that the quality of the stocks which you have for these mid-cap stocks is not at its best. Now, what you have to ideally try and do is refine your stocks uh, you know, uh, from f at current juncture. I'm not saying that shift your entire capital towards large cap names because that would be more of a defensive approach. But then if the markets continue to, uh, to, to move up higher the way we've seen in the last two, three months, it always makes a lot of sense to stick towards quality. So maybe out of 10 stocks, for example, on the mid-cap front, you can shift maybe three or four towards large cap names that could bolster your portfolio significantly. And then the remaining six stocks which you have for the mid-caps, you can try and even average out further. Right. Uh, Ashish, uh, next one, if uh, you could take for our viewer, kindly advise, the query is, the kindly advice, if I should buy, add, uh, which of the following four stocks in and around the current market price for short term and for medium term? BASF India, Crystal India, Sanofi India, and Linde India. Uh, this query is coming in from S. Rupchand from Mumbai. See, so Linde, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know uh, what does it mean by short to medium term, and uh, but Linde India is a very, very good uh, growth idea. Uh, but of course, for the long run, I mean, in the short to medium term, there will be various other things at play. But Linde India, certainly from a long term perspective, is one of the best ideas in the market today. And clearly, this would, out of the four, this would be my choice of something. But I would urge the investor to not be uh, impatient with it. I will try and keep it for a long period of time. This could be a real multi-bagger from here. This next one that I have is coming in from Hemanta Datta. SBI, shares, uh, SBI 50 shares at a price of 466 rupees per share. Uh, Kunal wants to know whether you should hold or exit or add more positions. I think you can hold on to your existing quantity. Uh, uh, I would probably wait out for maybe another couple of weeks uh, let the you know the maybe the results pass out for uh, you know SBI and then look out for buying the stock because you know at current juncture the stock seems to be in two phases over here. One is that it's heading towards a resistance of 50-day moving average. The other way that it's been a slight underperformer as compared to the other pack, the other stocks like uh, you know uh, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, etc. So I think in that regards there could there's there's an inherent underperformance which has come back into SBI. Maybe that could be on the anticipation of results or some some other event lined up for the stock price. So it's a good stock. You should hold on to it. But averaging, I would not suggest at current levels, possibly by the end of the month. Possibly by the end of the month. Right. Uh, let's take uh, the next one. It's coming in from RT, uh, for RT Drugs. Uh, Kunal, why don't you only take it? Sudhakar from Hyderabad says, RT Drugs, he has bought 234 shares at 613 rupees. Should I hold, average or sell them? So I think you should hold on to the stock. Uh, you can look to even average at current levels, but your averaging has to be a bit lesser. So, you know, ideally we would have recommended an averaging of 100% of the quantity if you've bought at higher levels and the stock corrects sharply. But then the uh, tendency with this stock is to go into sharp phases of rally and then prolonged phases of consolidation. I remember that phase in 2015-16 when the stock remained mm -hmm. sideways for almost four years. Uh, and managed to break out in 2019 onwards. So if that's the case, you may be stuck with a uh, maybe a good stock, but then uh, you know you may be stuck with a you know lot of time spent into this stock. So I think purely in that aspect, I would suggest to hold on to the existing quantity and go for a marginal average at current lows of 480. Okay, this one is coming from Jay Krishnan uh, from Kerala, and um, Ashish he wants to know about uh, DMART. So he has DMART at the price of around 4,074 rupees per share. He wants to know whether he should hold exit. Or look to enter uh, ultra tech for the medium term. I believe he wants to exit. If if you say exit, then maybe take the money and put it into ultra tech. Do you think this strategy works, or should he stay put with Avenue Supermarket as Dmart? Well, I would suggest stay put with Avenue Supermarkets and also add ultra tech if you have uh, more money. Uh, clearly, I mean uh, Avenue Supermarkets is a great growth story. I mean there have always been valuation concerns, but the growth which they have shown over the last few years has been very encouraging and has kind of justified the premium which this stock enjoys. 
So I think the, the consumer space in India, like I mentioned earlier, is set to grow and DMART is a very, very well established and a profitable model. So certainly stay with it. Uh, if you want to add more, you can add this also. And if you want to diversify, Ultratech also is a good story. I think a, a consistent uh, growth story from here. Cement will do well. And I think uh, Ultratech, given its established presence, will continue to do well and add operational efficiency. So both the stocks are a good idea. DMART, stay invested, try and add more. And if you have further cash available, add Ultratech as well. All right, sir. Uh, just request uh, both of you to stay on with us. We're taking a break. Nifty of the day's highest point, about 35 points of uh, the day's high. Taking a break. Stay tuned. Lots more lined up on the other side. Kunj, you are a very seasoned uh, uh, market observer and therefore you may hit the nail on the head. I think you have always uh, kept the focus on the retail investor and I think it's again a very apt, very good question. Nikunj, first of all, thank you so much. You are one person I've always enjoyed interacting uh, throughout the last 15-20 years. You know, the problem on coming on your channel is that you already know everything. I just heard your introduction. And what can anybody add to that? Stock markets is a numbers game. And it sometimes does come across as one dimensional. But what people don't see is that these numbers, when strung together, tell a story. There's no really black or white. It very much seems to be a work in progress of triumphs and mistakes, greed and fear. And I bring you that story behind the numbers in action. The personal finance show that helps you achieve all your financial dreams. This show gets you everything that you need to know about your money, how to earn more, invest smartly and spend while getting the best bang for your buck. From the perfect home to early retirement and everything in between. Real estate, everyone knows, is an asset that Indians absolutely love. Maybe even more than gold. Join us every weekday at 5pm on the ET Money Show. Investment made easy, only on ET Now. With each passing day, this market is becoming better. And with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. ITC's credo is nation first, sub saath bade. I would like to live this philosophy in whatever business we do. We continue to be very well diversified across product lines. The general health of the company continues to be very strong. We are a publicly listed company. We have access to capital. We have great brands. A beautiful question. Yeah, I can tell you, we believe that we'll be able to reduce costs. It, ET is one of my favorites in the world. 
I'm a fan. I'm a fan. This is a very insightful question that you ask, Nikunj, and almost seems like you were listening in on the deliberation the committee was doing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. But if this cup of coffee is costing you 25 rupees right now, after five years, it may cost you 100 rupees. Predicting the market or predicting the short-term move in the market, well, that's always very easy. Predicting it right and making money, it's not impossible. It could be a challenge. Nikunj, you are a very seasoned uh, uh, market observer and therefore you may hit the nail on the head. I think you have always uh, kept the focus on the retail investor and I think it's again a very apt, very good question. Nikunj, first of all, thank you so much. You are one person I've always enjoyed. Hello and uh, welcome back. Flashes of IDBI Bank regarding the JP Group seeks counterfeit for the sale of JP Infratech debt sale of about 3,570. So I think it's gone through that process or going through that process in terms of really what's happening in. Well, that's what, you know, <clears throat> that's what essentially... <coughs> Sorry for that. That's what essentially uh, one is looking at. Uh, let's now uh, address more queries. Uh, the Ashish, why don't you take it? I am Sudeep from Delhi. Uh, I have Adani Power 44 shares at 210. Should I book profits? Buy more at current level since it's corrected recently from the highs of 410 rupees. Uh, the issue here is, uh, you know, like in other Adani shares, the valuation comfort is not there. Uh, though there is of course momentum and a lot of hope. Uh, so best would really be to stay invested. I don't think we should add more. Stay invested because overall the sector is doing well. And like I said, I mean, you really want to be very safe before, you know, move into one of those other, you know, very the valuation plays like REC or the plays which indirectly play the power sector like Pebbles. But having said that, I think you would be making money in Adani power. So stay invested. Do not add more. I mean, I'm possibly if the potential which is, you know, expected does realize and Adani can move up more. Um, but I would not recommend you to add more at this level. At best, they invest it. All right. Uh, let me go across to some other queries as well. Uh, Kunal, this one is coming in with your name. Uh, it's Prashant who is asking this question. He says, uh, could you please, Kunal, for the short term, tell me the target for Axis Bank? I'm holding Axis Bank at the level of 728. So I think uh, today's high, which was around 760-61 mark for Axis Bank, seems to be a more of a resistance band for Axis Bank. This also coincides with the 50-day moving average for Axis Bank. Look at it this way, that the Bank Nifty is trading uh, above the 50-day moving average after today's move, and Axis Bank is trading below the 50-day moving average, which means that it's a stock which has been an underperformer from the banking uh, perspective. So I would suggest that if you're looking to book out profits over here, uh, you know, a 50 DMA is a very good point where you can look to book out. That should be around 760 mark for Access Bank. Right. Uh, Kunal, why don't you take this one as well? Imran Alam, City of Kolkata, from City of Kolkata, messages us, I have bought Wipro at 397. Can I add more to my portfolio at the current market price? Wipro, Kunal. I would definitely say a yes and uh, you know suggest a buying as well as averaging on Wipro at current levels. The only perspective over here would be that you can probably wait out for the the, the results to go by for uh, you know the uh, IT major. I think once the results uh, you know is out of the way, then I believe that you know, the path could be much more clearer. It's absolutely okay if you buy if you happen to buy the stock maybe a couple of percentage points higher post the results. But then at least there will be a lot of clarity because. I would sense that these IT stocks are getting into a very strong bottom formation zone. It's a matter of time that you would probably see these IT stocks participating quite handsomely and going in sync with the market mood as well. So I would suggest a buy on Wipro, but possibly you can, if you can just shelve your buying and you know, do it post the uh, results, that would be a much better uh, perspective. Right. Uh, Ashish, why don't you take this? Frankatesh from Bangalore tells us that I have tried in 2000 shares. Should I hold or buy at the current level? Uh, hold or sell, sorry. Well, again, I mean, I really haven't tracked it lately. I don't want to comment on this uh, particular one. 
Um, next one is uh, coming from Santi, and Santi, uh, Santi is holding uh, Sun TV, 50 shares at a price of 428 rupees per share. Ashish, he wants to know whether it's good time to add some more, add this stock itself on SIP or look to switch to Z at current price can give in and continue investing in Z given the fact that now you have the decks clear for the merger with Sony and uh, Santi believes that all the headwinds are uh, are done right now. Well, Z, I mean, even Sun TV itself is not a bad, uh, you know, stock, but Z would certainly be better. I think Z, yeah, but the advantage is Z has come down in the last uh, few trading sessions on the back of uncertainty, uh, you know. Uh, so I think Z would certainly be better for adding more. Because I would say continue holding on to Sun, but the SIP which you want to do, start doing in Z. Right. Uh, the next one that I have is uh, coming in uh, from. Um... Manish Raju, and he's bought 500 shares of Paradi Phosphates at 62 rupees per share. Kunal, this one is specifically for you. So, and 500 shares of BLS at 221 rupees per share. He's looking to add some more of uh, Pradeep Phosphates as well as BLS in his portfolio. Do you think it's a good advice for him to do it? I know that uh, Pradeep Phosphates is a very recently listed counter, but nevertheless, do you have views on both of it? So, I think you can continue to hold on to both of these stocks. For BLS, I would suggest maybe an averaging, which could be closer to 265. I think that was the previous month low or uh, I think the September month low for, uh, you know, BLS. Uh, I think that's a good support point. If you can happen to get the stock back around that 265 mark, that could be a point where you can look to average. Paradis Phosphates, uh, you know, the of course, the history is very limited. But then even on the short term uh, charts, the support for Paradis Phosphates is uh, just around that 60 mark. I think 58 or 59 was the previous month low for Paradis. And today, uh, in fact, this month, the stock has been uh, rising up higher 6%, 7% from those sub-60 levels. So 60 could be a point, a benchmark point, where you can look to average uh, further for Paradis Phosphates. Right. Um, this next one is also coming in uh, for you, Kunal. And this one is coming in from Harish. And Harish is writing to us from Bangalore. And... I believe you gave up view on Trident, I'm unsure actually, but uh, 50 shares average price, uh, can he average at uh, see, uh, current market price or are there any other chances uh, for a dip? So I would suggest to avoid uh, averaging Trident at current levels. Now the only reason for me suggesting an avoid is uh, that the weekly charts, the indicators on the weekly charts right from the month of June, July had gone into an oversold territory. Uh, rather a uh, negative territory and the stock has remained into a negative territory post that. So ideally from the June lows we could have expected the stocks to get into a bounce mode but we have not seen that happening for Trident. The indicators have not changed their course which means that uh, you know, the selling would continue for some more time for the stock price. So you can continue to hold on to your existing quantity but definitely not look to average at current levels. Right, let's take uh, the next one as well, which is coming in uh, from one of the viewers who says, Good morning, sir. I have BHEL at 63.45 level. My holding time is for long term. Regards, Rajni. Uh, Ashish, you have any view on BHEL? I think it's a, it's a very good stock idea. I mean, I think the capital good space is coming back uh, with the way kind of, uh, you know, uh, CapEx is returning in the, in, uh, in the economy. Uh, so BHL can be a very interesting idea. I mean, there's a bit of uh, risk here because you know, the stock has, uh, at least for the last many, many years, underperformed and let down investors on earnings uh, growth as well. But with the with the capex coming back, BHL could be a very interesting idea. So if you have a somewhat risk perspective as an investor and are willing to give it a few years, uh, BHL has the potential, mind you, of being a multi bagger from here. So the reward is very, the risk reward is very favorable. Uh, not the safest of space, like I said, but but the, the, from here, I think the reward can be multiple times the kind of risk which you will uh, entertain entering it. But but keep in mind that it would, would, would be a two to three year kind of a bet. But two to three year kind of a perspective, I think this looks very interesting and a very good entry point. Then, like I said, you could even multiply your money from here. Uh, right. The next query is coming in on GSFC and Kunal, why don't you take this? Uh, Sunny says, I have 1,000 quantity of GSFC at 149. What should be the medium term outlook? See, I think the charts for GSFC on just last week or so, 125 when the stock had made a low, I think the indicators had gone to a deep oversold territory. The RSI on the, you know, slightly, uh, not, the, not the early charts, but slightly more than that, higher than that, had gone to levels of single digit. Now, that's a very, very oversold nature of 
the charts for GSFC, you can expect a reasonable bounce from current levels of from those levels of 125. So, say possibly another 140, 145 could be a nominal target for GSFC. So, you should try and play for this uh, potential 15 rupees kind of a rally for GSFC from current levels, and I think that's how you should be positioned. So, if you bought at higher levels, you can look to average further a substantial quantity over here. But then closer to 140, 145 is where I believe you should book out. All right, this next one coming in uh, from uh, Samir. And Kunal, this one is also headed your way. He's writing to us from West Bengal and he wants to know about an auto stock that he can hold in his portfolio for the short term as well as for the long term. And also he wants to know, he's given one stock uh, uh, recommendation, is Hero Motocorp. Do you think that this one is worth accumulating right now? So I think four wheelers is much better. I would recommend m and as the first and the most preferred bet. Uh, even at current levels, I think the stock is now not closer to its all-time high levels, but I think 5% lower than its all-time high levels. That makes it very attractive uh, from a long-term play as well, uh, from a timing perspective. And then if you want to add uh, maybe another uh, you know, stock from the auto pack, then uh, you can look at Maruti. But if you're not okay with these high denominated prices for stock prices, then I would suggest going with Tata Motors because the risk reward for Tata Motors at current levels of 400, 410 is also very attractive. So you can pick out two out of the three names which I mentioned. Right, the next one is coming is from Akash Math uh, Mathur and he's writing to us from Daman. He has uh, ICICI Bank at 777 rupees per share, IDSC first at 49.5. Um, Ashish, he wants to know whether should he add on to some more exposure in both of these counters. I believe both of them are actually topping the charts when it comes to good performance, isn't it? Yeah, both of them are doing well. I think ICICI Bank is certainly not a, a no-brainer. I think if the way the economy is poised and the way the credit growth is coming back, credit demand is coming back, ICICI Bank, after the restructuring which it did a few years ago is, is very well poised to take advantage of this credit boom. The stock already has done well. But yes, I think stock will continue to do well. I think next two to three years looks very good for ICICI Bank. Uh, stay invested. We can add more also. IDFC first, a different kind of uh, you know uh, risk reward uh, paradigm here because the bank is still uh, in the process of restructuring. The performance is yet to show. So there's a lot of promise here. Uh, ICC Bank, like I said, is no-brainer, is a very clear trend. I, IDFC first bank is a little uh, tricky here. Can, the reward can be very good, but the risk is there. So as a good combination, I think ICC Bank and IDFC first is a good combination because one is not going to give you such a fantastic return from here, but is very safe. The other one has a bit of risk, but can give you a major, majorly high return from here. So I think it's a good combination, stay invested and you can buy more, both of them. Uh, Kunal, uh, one very well-tracked stock, one not that well-tracked, uh, it's coming in from Sudha. Which one, Schneider Electric or SBI card, worth buying for the medium to long term? I would go for SBI cards. Uh, I understand that it's been an underperformer as such, but then the recovery from the June lows, uh, you know, when I think SBI cards was sub-700, to a point where the stock had crossed 900 levels in a matter of just two months. And that's a stellar recovery of almost 30% plus for a stock like SBI cards in that time span. I think has changed the texture uh, you know, somewhat. Even though the stock is consolidating, I believe it's a good time to enter the stock at current levels of uh, you know, sub-900. So I would prefer SBI cards because of the risk reward and the very recent rally the stock has seen. Right. Uh... Ashish, why don't you take this one as well? Uh, Professor Thomas V. George from Kochi is asking Federal Bank, ICICI Bank, which one is better buy uh, for the long term considering the current market prices? Well, I think both are very good. I think ICICI Bank I just uh, talked about. Even Federal Bank looks very good. Again, it depends on your risk reward uh, kind of, you know, outlook. Uh, ICICI Bank is certainly very safe. It may not give very great returns from here, but it's a very safe and I think would safely give about 15-20% returns annualized over the next few years as well. Uh, Federal Bank can give you much more returns, but of course it's a smaller bank, has more volatility and has some risk in it. Uh, so depending on your risk reward, ideally I would think that you know you should have one large cap and one mid cap. So both of them look very good if you combine both of them, put half of uh, or whatever percentage you are comfortable with in both of them. But both of them look good. ICC Bank, uh, certainly safer, uh, but Federal Bank has more return potential. Right. Uh, this next one um, is a bit longish, Kunal, and uh, this one is specifically directed for you, I'm sure. 
This one is coming from Sagar and Sagar has made a point to let all of us know that right now he's holidaying in Greece. Thank you so much for that, Sagar. We needed exactly that a day after break. So uh, he wants to know, do divergents always work or are there any limitations or drawbacks? Because he's got more than 50 stocks showing negative divergence on MACD or RSI on daily frame and still has gone two times from that level. Or he's asking, or do you feel that divergence do doesn't matter if somebody has the power of volume with them despite the stock ha having an 80 plus RSI with negative di divergence as well? So I'll take the first part of the query, which is holiday in Greece. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> and I don't know whether you're suggesting me to be uh, in part of that holiday or not. But then uh, coming to the second part of the question, which is divergence. Yes, of course, divergence is typically a very good uh, uh, you know, uh, strategy or a, or a method in which we try and identify that a stock could probably get into a bottom formation zone as well as into a rally mode. But then there are a lot of ways in which divergences can, spotted, uh, you know, can be spotted. Divergences on the daily charts are, uh, or rather on the early charts, have less prominence into the stock price as compared to the daily, daily time frame. A divergence in the weekly charts is much more stronger as compared to a daily time frame. Uh, even though uh, on the daily charts as well as on the weekly charts, we have to look out for the which stage the divergences have occurred, whether they occur you know, at a point where the stock has just started to get into a rally mode, whether the selling has abated into the stock price, how sharp and steep have been the extent of selling for you know, the stocks, whether it's on the back of news flow, extreme amount of selling in terms of volumes, etc. So there are a lot of different characteristics which we are certain for divergences, which is why a divergence in a stock X could be completely different in a divergence in a stock Y uh, because of the various set of parameters and the uh, you know, filters which we have to uh, you know, uh, put into these names. So, but yes, divergence do work depending on the time frame which you're looking out for. The higher the time frame, the much higher is the probability that the bounce is far more sharper. Has Sagar actually given us a next topic for BNS and Pachara Kunal with this query? Seems like. Yes, and also he's corrected me saying that he's on a vacation and he's not uh, in a holiday. Doesn't matter, you are at, in Greece, uh, Sagar, so it's fine. <laughs> but uh, on that note, we'll actually take a break on this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now. And a short one, we are not going anywhere. But when we come back, we'll be back with your queries. So don't go anywhere. I've been practicing uh, throughout the last 15, 20 years. You know, the problem on coming on your channel is that you already know everything. I just heard your introduction. And what can anybody add to that? Stock markets is a numbers game and it sometimes does come across as one-dimensional. But what people don't see is that these numbers, when strung together, tell a story. There's no really black or white. It very much seems to be a work in progress of triumphs and mistakes, greed and fear. And I bring you that story behind the numbers in action. The personal finance show that helps you achieve all your financial dreams. This show gets you everything that you need to know about your money, how to earn more, invest smartly and spend while getting the best bang for your buck. From the perfect home to early retirement and everything in between. Real estate, everyone knows, is an asset that Indians absolutely love. Maybe even more than gold. Join us every weekday at 5pm on the ET Money Show. Investment made easy, only on ET Now. With each passing day, this market is becoming better. And with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. ITC's credo is nation first, sab saath bade. I would like to live this philosophy in whatever business we do. We continue to be very well diversified across product lines. The general health of the company continues to be very strong. We are a publicly listed company. We have access to capital. We have great brands.
No, good, good question. Yeah, I can tell you, we believe that we'll be able to reduce costs. It, E.T. is one of my favorites in the world. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. This is a very insightful question that you're asking, Nikunj, and almost seems like you were listening in on the deliberation the committee was doing. Uh, and you're absolutely right. And if this cup of coffee is costing you 25 rupees right now, after five years, it may cost you 100 rupees. Predicting the market or predicting the short-term move in the market, well, that's always very easy. Predicting it right and making money, it's not impossible. It could be a challenge. Nikunj, you are a very seasoned uh, uh, market observer and therefore you may hit the nail on the head. I think you have always uh, kept the focus on the retail investor and I think it's again a very apt, very good question. Nikunj, first of all, thank you so much. You are one person I've always enjoyed interacting uh, throughout the last 15-20 years. You know, the problem on coming on your channel is that Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. And we are continuing taking uh, viewer queries. This one is coming in from uh, Ayanata Chatterjee from Kolkata. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And please apologies if I am not. Uh, wants to know about Infosys at current levels. Does it make sense to buy this one? And if not Infosys, then which one should she look to add in a portfolio? What's your take on this one? Uh, Ashish, she's looking for a medium-term horizon uh, investment. Well, I, uh, medium term has to be defined, but I think if it is something like two years plus, then certainly I think I think the IT sector, in fact, has reached a very great uh, value point. Uh, headwinds are still there, so the next uh, six months to one year could be still very choppy and could be flattish. But if you have a two year plus kind of a horizon, then I think this is a great time to accumulate IT stocks. And especially the, the large frontline ones, and Infosys is no exception. I think Infosys has also seen a very decent connection. Uh, from a longer term perspective, certainly no brainer here. Go ahead and buy Infosys, TCS, HCL Tech, Wipro on you know, all these uh, frontline stocks. But like I said, I think in the next very near term, because of the uncertainties in US, uh, we may still remain you know, in a choppy kind of a zone and maybe the six months to one year could be flattish or maybe even mildly negative on these stocks. But two year plus, certainly very good, very uh, great time to enter and buy these stocks. Well, Imran wants to know about Fortis Healthcare. He's already purchased at the price of around 265 rupees per share. He's saying that uh, he has a, a horizon of about six months. Do you think Fortis Hospitals makes sense to stay put with this one for the next six months? I think we should exit the stock or look out to book profits. I think at 265 right now, 271, 272 is where uh, Fortis is. Uh, I would suggest to uh, you know book out profits because of the fact that the stock in the last uh, you know couple of weeks had gone through a sharp negative news flow. The indicators have been extremely negative for Fortis since that, which means you are looking at a possibility of just a bounce into the, into the stock price, which may get sold into. So I think it's better that you should book out profits into such names. All right, and with that, let's kick start with the rapid fire then. And let me uh, get this first one uh, your way only, Kunal. Indu is asking for entry levels for JSW Energy for a positional trade. So I think JSW Energy, you can look, look to buy at uh, just around the 305, 310 mark. Okay, this one has come from uh, Sandeep. He's writing for, from Tirupur, wants to know about Sona Comstar, bought at 590 rupees per share. What's the prospect for this one? Now, makes sense to hold on to this one. What's your take, Ashish? Uh, well, I haven't tracked it, so I'll let it pass. All right. Uh, this next one is uh, coming in from uh, Tumpa Ganguly. Wants to now know if, may, if it makes sense to buy Bajaj Finance right now. We spoke about it in, uh, during the lens, but Kunal? Well, yes, you can look to buy at current levels, but then have a strategy of we can uh, look to add at 5% dips. Okay, this one is coming from Sati. She wants to know about speciality chemical stock, which is the best one to look to invest for the longer term. What's your take on this one, Ashish? 
Well, I think the best one uh, to me would be PI Industries. I think that is certainly a good uh, compounder and will continue to do so going ahead. Okay, uh, this next one that I have is coming in uh, from Anuradha about Taj GBK, 100 shares at a price of 168 rupees per share. Should she continue hold on to it or look to invest in Indian hotels? What's your take on this one, Kunal? I would suggest to hold on to Taj GBK and if possible, then look to add Chalet or Lemon Tree as well. Okay, this one is coming in from Bajaj Kheri. He has 400 shares of Indus Bank, purchased at 1,710 rupees per share. Should he hold, sell or book loss? What's your take on this one, Ashish? Well, certainly hold on and try and add more on declines. Uh, and the kind of uncertainty period with this bank is also over. So, uh, the future looks very really promising. So, certainly stay invested and try and add more. Okay, this one is from Santosh from Mysore. Right time to invest in Tata Motors at current levels, Kunal? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, the next one that I have is coming in from Chitra from Bangalore. Canfin Homes has 300 shares at 509. Wants to hold for the next three months. How long can it go on to? I, I would suggest to avoid the stock. I think it's just at your cost price, you should look to exit. All right, and with that, we come to the end of the queries as well as the rapid fire. Thank you so much, Ashish, as well as Kunal, for joining us on the show, giving us your take on NDFCs as well as resolving viewer queries. And viewers, for those who we've not answered queries for, please don't be disheartened. We will be back tomorrow and we will be taking queries tomorrow as well. So do write in to us. 11 a.m. is when the show starts. And for now, uh, we're totally out of time on this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now. It's a goodbye from myself. Pankaj will carry on from Markets at Noon with Anisha. And you already know everything. I just heard your introduction. And what can anybody add to that? Stock markets is a numbers game, and it sometimes does come across as one dimensional. But what people don't see is that these numbers, when strung together, tell a story. There's no really black or white. It very much seems to be a work in progress of triumphs and mistakes, greed and fear. And I bring you that story behind the numbers in action. The personal finance show that helps you achieve all your financial dreams. This show gets you everything that you need to know about your money, how to earn more, invest smartly and spend while getting the best bang for your buck. From the perfect home to early retirement and everything in between. Real estate, everyone knows, is an asset that Indians absolutely love. Maybe even more than gold. Join us every weekday at 5pm on the ET Money Show. Investment made easy, only on ET Now. With each passing day, this market is becoming better. And with each passing day, this market is only telling you that if you've participated on every decline, you've actually made money. ITC's credo is nation first, sub saath bade. I would like to live this philosophy in whatever business we do. We continue to be very well diversified across product lines. The general health of the company continues to be very strong. We are a publicly listed company. We have access to capital. We have great brands. From a global question, yeah, I can tell you, we believe that we'll be able to reduce costs it, E.T. is one of my favorites in the world. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. This is a very insightful question that you're asking. It's a quite Thursday in a truncated week, but benchmark indices hold on to gains while broader indices outperform. Metals, media and auto stocks lend major support and FMCG and Pharma lag and trade today. Crude 
prices gain for fourth straight day after the OPEC Plus agrees to implement steepest reduction cuts since 2020. Brent crude prices have a near their $93 per barrel mark after recently falling to $84. Meanwhile, the dollar index resumed the uptrend, trading near the 111 level. Entertainment cools off from the day's high but still remains upbeat after the Competition Commission approves its merger with Sony. But the conditions, um, analysts believe this is a major positive for the company and the stock is available at compelling valuations. Bajaj Finance share better off despite strong growth across key parameters in Q2. AUM rises by 31% YOY with deposit growth at 37%. Stock of Bharat Ford surging on the back of record Class 8 truck orders. Spicejet is another high flyer today as the airline is set to get 1,000 crore rupees with the modified credit line guarantee. Remember, the centre had modified the scheme to help airlines receive more collateral free liquidity at lower rates. Welcome, you're watching Markets at Noon on ET Now. I am Anisha Jain um, and with me is Pankaj Poddar as always. In terms of the market, it's not a bad looking screen at all. We are 90 points higher and after the gains that we saw on uh, Tuesday, the market momentum seems to be building up. 17,365 is where we are at. Of course, we are off the highest point of the trading session but can't complain much given the entire um, market setup that we have seen off late. In terms of the sector specific moves, we have uh, Media which is doing quite well, led by Z Entertainment, PVR is quite excited, Inox Leisure is also quite uh, doing well and even the metal space, the likes of Wellspun Corp, GSW Steel, Vedanta, they are all quite active in the trading session but Pankaj today, it's Pharma and FMCG which is taking the back seat. Absolutely, you know, when we just look at the markets, it's metals which is doing well, and as you pointed out, it's the FMCG pack, especially led by Kotrich Consumer. 92 points half for the Nifty, mid cap index is up 1.4, small cap is up 1.5, 1.6 odd percent. That's broadly, you know, what one is looking at in terms of uh, the pricing and what's really happening in uh, uh, happening in on the mid cap side. Sterlite Technologies is up 12 percent. JSW Energy, I see no reason, but I'll try and find out why is it up 12%, 328, it's a pretty strong move, maybe there is a buyer, but we'll try and find out if there is any news flow as well. Garden Reach is up 10%, HEG is up 10%, Bharat Forge is up 9%, we'll get more in terms of Bharat Forge, why it is buzzing, there are a couple of news flow, and that's something which we'll tell you more. Uh, Mishra Dhatu is up 7%, Persistent System is up 6%, Graphite is up about uh, 6 to 7 odd percent, Spice Jet, APL Apollo, Wellspun Corp, uh, Kaveri, Z, India Cements are all buzzing in, but I can tell you most of these stocks is something that we will cover as we go past through the show. You have GCPL, which is down 5%. You have a Granules, which is down 2%. Abharti Airtel is down a couple of percentage points. And Biocon and HUL are also uh, among losers. Nuresh, what do you make of this move in the market? Uh, we open gap up. We continue to be where we are. What is the sense that you get? So Nifty is facing resistance around that 17,400, 450 mark, which was a resistance. And we are still in that band wherein uh, we are yet to get into a huge momentum on the Nifty, but we should find a resistance around 7,400, 600, 16,800 should act as a support. And in that period, we would expect uh, uh, broader markets to do uh, relatively better. So till the time we are above 16,800, broader markets look more interesting. And that's the view because we are not yet into a, a period of time where the global markets are uh, shining in a big way. We are just seeing global markets take a pullback and we are in an uptrend. So in that case, uh, it would be more broader market action rather than index specific. So at 17,400, 600, we'll continue to see some selling pressure on the indices. 
Okay, so there might be some selling pressure at the higher levels. At least uh, that is what the chart check is suggesting. But Nuresh, if I had to ask you your top sectoral bet as well as, as the top sectoral or other stock specific recommendation, what would that be? So right now taking stock by stock, uh, not really sectoral uh, till the time we get into a strong momentum. So two stocks from different sectors. First is the Bayan Jubilant Food Works, which is uh, uh, trying to play the catch up with the whole uh, uh, space uh, wherein a sapphire or a restaurant brands or a specialty, everything has done well. The largest player is yet to do so. And the stock made a new swing high in the last couple of sessions. This could play a catch up, go towards 700 in the short term, a stop loss at 630, good risk reward here. Second is the Bayan Bharati Airtel, which after making that above, high above 780, did a little dip, retested and again made a new high. And now again a little dip is a buying opportunity. This dip is where one gets a risk reward entry point closer to 785 to 792 levels. Uh, stop loss at 778 and a target price of 850. Okay, let's talk about soft specific action as well in terms of the key gainers. There's Sterlite Tech, JSW Energy and Bharat Forge. JSW Energy and Bharat Forge of course have news flow to back it but what about the chart checks on these three counters? So uh, say uh, or uh, out of these names, uh, I don't track a lot of them closely, but JSW Energy is still in a sideways uh, consolidation. So, would be watching out if it can sustain above the 340-350 mark, which is still a little far away. And this is more like a, uh, say, a pullback after correcting from 360 all the way down to 280-290s. So, Bharat Forge is the one which is more interesting because that is where it has multiple tops around that 780 to 800 levels. Whenever it can cross above that, that would be a new trend for the stock. All right. Thanks so much for that. Uh, let's now go across uh, to Sharad. He's there with us for the segment that we call ET Now Insights. We have been observing that many analysts have been cutting estimates on the back of cost inflation, slowdown fear. Almost half of the company uh, have uh, seen downgrades for next three months uh, in the sectors like IT, auto, metals, consumer discretionary. Let's go across to Sharad for more on this. Well, yes, the EPS downgrades are becoming more for the next three months as well as analysts are expecting to cut the earnings estimates going ahead. And especially this is the reason coming in due to cost inflation and also slow down fears as well. Now going ahead in our analysis, we have taken companies with at least 10 analysts tracking the stock and total of 145 stocks have been uh, selected in this universe as well and almost half of these stocks have seen downgrades for the next three months as well. Now in the sectors which seeing the highest number of downgrades coming in the EPS, we have IT, auto as well as metals when it comes to your EPS downgrades. Now do remember the EPS changes for the next three months if we see we see the downgrades coming at almost 